are the hungry bellies of rockets and missiles. Their diets are critical. The big jobs eat a lot, and mixing it by hand isn't good enough anymore. It's slow, risky, passe. Toledo Scale and Thiokol teamed up to build new kitchens, automated batch mix facilities, to prepare careful diets automatically. On a Utah desert, the most modern concept in America took shape. Control consoles with graphic displays, solid state circuitry, button logic, color coding, interlocks, and fail-safe devices to do a big job with care and precision. It's done with speed, accuracy, uniformity, safety. The food is ugly, yet beautiful, full of muscle, the strength of a nation. It feeds multi-million pound thrust boosters. It's called solid propellant. Solid propellant is made in three stages. First, aluminum powder and polymer binder are blended to form a premix. Second, various sized particles of ammonium perchlorate form an oxidizer. Third, the oxidizer and premix are blended at a final mix station where an epoxy curing agent is added. Each production stage is handled in a separate building. First stage, pre-mix, highly crucial, because aluminum powder is the fuel in the final solid propellant. The container carries 5,000 pounds of aluminum powder, mean, cantankerous, so hard to handle that only a specially designed feeder could harness it. A premix container is positioned beneath the discharge point. The rest of the operation is remotely controlled. Green lights mean go. Batch number, formula number, date, time, and required weight are logged. Polymer, a binding agent, is fed from storage tanks through heat-traced pipes to maintain constant viscosity. The premix container receiving the polymer rests on a special load cell platform programmed to measure only net weight. All feedings in the entire system are on a two-speed basis, fast and dribble. Load cells signal the feeder, a tolerance check for near perfection then read out of weight and tank number from which it was drawn. Now, an automatic advancement to aluminum, which is also weighed into the premix can. The small amount of powder in suspension is considered at final cutoff. The weight of aluminum is checked for accuracy against program tolerance. If sufficiently accurate, it is recorded. Aluminum and polymer are blended thoroughly. Sealing avoids contamination. Formula number and batch characteristics follow the premix container to the final mix building. The second stage, preparing the oxidizer in a remote building. Various particle sizes of ammonium perchlorate, similar to granulated and powdered sugar, 
are conveyed to bins above a way hopper. The entire operation is controlled and monitored remotely. Way hopper and check scale are zeroed and the information is logged. Each material is weighed, in turn, on an analog to digital scale system, fast, then dribble, and check for proper tolerance. The materials are individually emptied into a transfer bin, resting on a check scale, where a final tolerance check is made. Their accumulated weight is logged, and the oxidizer is ready for delivery to final mix, the third and last production stage. Here, oxidizer is combined with the pre-mix, and an epoxy curing agent is added. Because of the need for massive quantities of fuel, there are four final mix operations, each in a separate building. All are controlled and monitored from a remote master control center by one man. The operations are controlled by preset formula boards. Variations can be made in weights, ratios, tolerances, sequences, and mixer cycle for almost unlimited flexibility. Closed circuit television monitors each premix operation. Oxidizer in a sealed container is placed on a specially designed elevator and tilting fixture and positioned onto a feeder. Weights of the container, feeder, and tilt mechanism are subtracted, leaving only the weight of the oxidizer available to the control panel. Epoxy is pressure-fed to a scale hopper volumetrically, then weighed into the mixer on a loss-in-weight principle. Finally, the pre-mix. Load cells check its weight against the data on the card. It also discharges on loss-of-weight methods. Temperatures are maintained by controlled heat in a water jacket. All ingredients are in place. And the building is cleared a safety warning signal is set. The final mixing operation cannot begin until a personnel key unlocks the master control console. Quality control sheets from the oxidizer and pre-mix batches are used in preparing the final mix log sheet. Before the operation can begin, all components must be within tolerance. When all stations are go, the operator touches the start button. Batch and formula numbers, date, time, and other quality control information is logged. The oxidizer weight is sensed. The scale is zeroed, and flow begins. The oxidizer is dynamically screened to prohibit contamination, then delivered into the mixer. The system makes a tolerance check and the weight is logged. As the premix begins to flow, mixing begins automatically. Again, a tolerance check and a log entry. After a preset mixing time, blending stops 
and epoxy is carefully added in a precise amount. More mixing until the batch has reached the correct homogeneous mass. At any time, the system can be switched to manual control. Should a no-go situation occur because of malfunction or out of tolerance condition, the quality control operator will decide to reject the batch or bring it within manufacturing limits. The safety key overrides the automatic program. This batch is recorded in red. The manufacturer receives a complete log of all materials, accurate to within one part in 10,000 on loads up to 3,000 pounds. A careful diet in two and a half hours, a little more than half the time formerly required. Solid propellant, a meticulous food for giant monolithic space boosters, ready to protect a nation or send vehicles hurtling into space to find the promise of tomorrow.